Hey guys, it's Richard. You're watching The Plain Bagel. Welcome to another party pooper video where I ruin everyone's fun and you're sad at the end of the video. Today I wanted to cover a high level concept uh, because 2018 was a crazy year with things like Bitcoin, the weed stock rally, tech stock rally. Uh, it was a very strange year for investments. You know, some investments did very well and some came crashing down. And I think that for people who started investing in 2018, it offered some very strange experience uh, that might have you know, skewed what they expect from investments. Um, and I also wanted to cover this topic because I've been getting a lot of dumb YouTube ads about uh, people selling trading strategies. You know, People saying, oh, I've used this one strategy, this very simple strategy for 10 years and I've made millions of dollars or whatever. Um, and I think those are very harmful and in the current environment, advertisements like that and programs like that are left to thrive, uh, usually at the detriment of many investors. So I wanted to take a moment to make a very sobering statement, which is that investments won't make you rich, probably. At least not in the short term. Investments are able to bridge the gap between what we have and what we need, but it's not able to make wealth out of thin air. And I'll explain later why I think that having this mentality that investments can make you rich is not only foolish, but it can be harmful to your own financial well-being. Uh, but we'll start by going over the three points that I maintain show uh, why investments won't make you rich. And the first one is that you need money in the first place to become rich with investments. Even if you make an incredible investment decision, you need money in the first place for that to reap proper rewards. If you invest $1,000 and earn 100%, that's great, but you made another $1,000, which doesn't make you rich. Uh, you know, great return, but you're not quite there yet. And people might point to individuals who have made a lot of money off of investments and you know, say, well, they did it, why can't I? But there was a survey done by Spectrum Group which pulled households uh, with net values between $100,000 and a million dollars outside of their primary residence. So in addition to the value of the house that they lived in. And they were asked to rate some core beliefs on a scale of zero to 100 based on how important they believed it was uh, for them creating their wealth. So basically asking them, you know, how did you get to this point in your life where you have this wealth at your disposal? And what they found was that most of the highly rated statements all had to do with savings, not key investment decisions. And one of the highest scoring statements with the uh, average score of 81.98 was the following. A dedicated and regular savings program is something I consider very important. So a lot of these people made their wealth from saving money, not from investing uh, alone. And I think it's important to always come back to this idea that before we make incredible financial decisions, we need to be fiscally responsible. Uh, you know, your investments will only do as well as your savings program. Uh, if you're spending more money than you're making with investments, well, you're negating the whole impact of, of smart investing. My second point as to why I maintain that investments won't make you rich is that on average, investments don't make anyone rich. The S&P 500 for the past 90 years has an annual return, average return of 9.8% which by the way is pretty darn good in the world of investments. If you could lock in 9.8% for the rest of your life, I'd, I'd go all in, I'd, I'd certainly lock that in, but it's not going to make you a millionaire overnight. You could just do the math to see that. Let's say for example that you have $10,000 to invest um, and you're able to get that S&P 500 average return of 9.8% ignoring taxes and fees, which uh, would probably bring that down a few percentage points. Uh, but let's say you invest that amount and you earn this return, it would take you 51 years to hit a million dollars with that amount. So unless you started investing at the age of 15 with $10,000, you're probably not gonna hit a million dollars by the age of 65. Um, you know, you might get close and, and by all means, uh, it also shows you the power of investing, but you're not gonna hit that milestone in a very short period of time. Now, like I said, a lot of people, when they think about investing and they think about earning high returns, they wanna do so in the short term. Um, so let's say that you instead wanna, with the $10,000, hit a million dollars within 10 years. Uh, with that, you would need to be earning a return of 59% every year for the 10 years. And it's not likely that you'll find one investment that can earn you that amount. Most investments, uh, from you know my understanding, 
will earn you a high return for a few years if they're a high growth company and then kind of taper out. So that means that you have to continually find more ideas and more companies that are in that early stage and earning that you know almost 100% return and you need those picks to outweigh the bad picks you make because certainly if you're in that world of investments you're going to find some negative return positions you're going to lose some money on these startup ideas so it's kind of foolish to assume that you'll be such an outlier that while other people are earning sub 10 percent you'll be making 59 percent a year and hitting that million dollar mark if you do great and it's not to challenge people who claim they have done that maybe some people have but again for the rest of us probably not likely now my third and final point as to why you won't become a millionaire by investing is that you're actually kind of bad at investing. <laughs> and I mean that in the most sincere way possible because we as humans are terrible investors. We have all these biases and these shortcomings that really, you know, if you look at the data, it's pretty embarrassing, you know, the kinds of mistakes that we make over and over again and how we struggle to overcome these biases that lower our returns over time. I mean, there are these studies called the Dalbar studies, which are released every year, and they show the returns of mutual fund investors. Um, and their most recent issue, which was from 2017, showed that over the past 20 years, the S&P 500 earned an annual average return of 7.68%. So that's uh, obviously less than the 90-year average, but still, you know, decently high. Whereas the average equity fund investor only made 4.79% a year. So almost three percentage points less than the index, than the average. Now, I know some people would look at that and say, well, of course, these people are using active mutual funds. Uh, you know, if they were just passive investors, they would uh, earn the index return, maybe less a bit of a fee. But fees aren't actually the reason why uh, they did so poorly. Dalbar actually highlighted the three top factors that led to this underperformance. And none of them have to do with fees or investment strategy. In fact, the top three factors for the underperformance were capital not being available uh, to invest, capital being needed for other purposes, and the third point is psychological factors. One of the examples they highlighted is that so many investors sell when the markets are down. And the Dalbar study showed that the average retention rate of these active mutual funds were 3.8 years meaning that on average people could only stand their investments for 3.8 years uh, to hold these funds before they jumped ship and tried something else. And based on the examples we covered earlier, you need a long-term period to make money off of investments and we can't even make it to the four-year mark. Uh, so it just goes to show how bad at investing we are on average. And there are specific biases that kind of explain why we make these poor decisions and they've been defined time and time again uh, and it's worth highlighting them. Uh, one of them, for example, is the loss aversion bias. One of the biggest ones, which is when things are down, we want to cut our losses. We worry about losing more money, and that often leads us to selling at the worst possible time. There are things like anchoring, which is when something happens in the past, we have a hard time changing our perception of how things should occur in the future based on this past event. Bitcoin is a great example of that. Some people saw the massive return of Bitcoin and are still holding on thinking, that that return is gonna repeat because it happened in the past, it should happen again. But that's an example of anchoring. There's also herding, which is the idea that we often follow the decisions of other people. So when markets are down, we tend to follow the herd and do what they do because we don't want to you know, stick our neck out and try something different because it might turn out poorly. And then there's things like regret aversion, which is kind of the same idea where we don't like the feeling of regret, obviously. but that can thereby paralyze us in making decisions. We don't want to regret uh, selling when things are high. We don't want to regret uh, you know, holding on when things are low. We worry about making decisions that are tough and thereby we usually don't make a decision when we need to. And it's kind of funny, you know, the only way to become a great investor is to acknowledge that you're a terrible investor, to, to see these flaws and to be aware of them, to know that you know, I might make a bad decision what are the steps I can take to avoid that, to make sure I don't you know, succumb to the behavioral biases I have? And you know, it certainly doesn't help that we have all these ads from rich people flaunting their wealth and saying, you know, I'm gonna show you how to make money, uh, you know, trying to sell you on the idea of uh, getting rich quick. And you know what, I get it. I get that if you're trying to show people that you made a lot of money doing something that you should probably show them your money. Whereas I'm here in front of my Ikea furniture, you know, trying to tell you how you should invest. Uh, but at the same time, you know, 
it really it can really be used to abuse the viewer. Uh, these people basically promise these things to you. They show you these things and they say, I can offer you this through this five step program or through this marketing strategy. And yet I would argue that most of these people, I, I would bet that most of these people made most of their money from marketing, not from their strategy that they are selling you. And if you ever get an advertisement of someone selling you a trading strategy and saying, this will earn you 20% or 30% return guaranteed. Just ask yourself, you know, why are they selling this to you? Because if this person really had a proven trading strategy that could earn them, you know, above par returns, they should just sell it to a hedge fund. They could be paid millions of dollars for selling the strategy. Why are they selling it to you through a YouTube ad? Chances are it's because they know the hedge fund won't bite, but you might. And don't get me wrong, there's a difference between programs that educate and programs that promise high returns. I can't fault someone for selling an educational program, even if it's a few thousand dollars to say, I'm gonna show you the world of investments and show you how it works. But some of these people are saying, I'm gonna show you one simple trading strategy that will make you a lot of money. And maybe you haven't seen these advertisements for these trading strategies and stuff. And you know, you might think, well, Richard's just being cranky. He doesn't want people to find out how to invest and to make a lot of money because then they'll stop watching his videos. But it's not just me being, you know, a bit cranky. I, I'm a cranky guy, I know that, but it's not just that. The SEC on its website has a warning about these advertisements, about programs that promise to train you to show you how to earn high returns. Uh, and I'll share the link down below showing the warning, but it just goes to show, like, this is a real problem. This is something that a lot of people are losing money on. But anyway, to tie this all back, investments probably won't make you rich. And that's okay. You know, investments are still a great tool. If used over the long term, they can make you a lot of money, even with a you know, single digit return. But you just need to gauge your expectations. You need to make sure that you aren't expecting too much from the world of investing. Because I think when you have high expectations, these uh, above 20% returns every year, and you don't reach them, it's that gap where you're more likely to make a poor behavioral decision, where you might sell low because you've lost money in a given year and you thought you were gonna be making 20% a year. And you know what? It's tough to be a good investor in this day and age. With social media, all the news about people making millions of dollars, uh, every day it seems like we're being bombarded with stories of you know get-rich-quick schemes and people just becoming unbelievably wealthy. But you know what, that will always exist. You can do so well in investments and finance and there will always be someone with more money than you, with more than you have. You know, investing isn't about being better than other people. It's about reaching your financial goals. And one person's financial goal might be higher or lower than someone else's. It doesn't matter. What matters is, you know, reaching those goals and being happy with it. So I hope you liked this video, guys. Uh, I'm sorry it was kind of unorganized, but I, I, it was just something on my mind that, you know, after seeing all these ads for these trading strategies, it kind of festered for a while and I just wanted to post a video about it. If you liked it, make sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell icon if you want uh, notifications about future videos like this. And let me know in the comments down below what you think about videos like this. Um, I might try doing more like them. I like ranting about topics, I guess. Uh, and you know, it's, it's, it's fun to, to change up the style every now and then. So uh, let me know what you think, guys. And yeah, thanks for joining me today and be safe out there.